Today is Wednesday and I welcome all of you to our Bible study with me. And Faith comes by hearing the word of God, hearing comes by listening to the word of God. I pray you get faith the size of a mustard seed and grow. We know it so you know just what to do with it. Faith comes by hearing the word of God. And if you've heard it, please pick up the word of God. I pray you get faith the size of a mustard seed and grow. We know it so you know just what to do with it. This world it ain't home, we just live in it as pilgrims. Convince yourself, read the Praise word. the name of the Lord. I hope you are fine. Indeed, faith comes by hearing and hearing only the word of God. The word of God is the sword of a Christian soldier. Praise the Lord. So, um, today is Wednesday and I welcome all of you to our Bible study with me. And uh, today we still continue with our study of Ephesians chapter 6. And uh, we have done God's instruction to children we have done God's instruction to fathers. We have done God's instruction to slaves. And today we are going to God instruction to Christian masters or Christian employers. Praise the Lord. So what does God require of Christian employers? So we are going to read today the book of Ephesians chapter 6 verse 9. That is where we, we are. And this is what it says, Masters, treat your slaves in the same way. Do not threaten them, since you know that he who is both their master and yours is in heaven, and there is no favoritism with him. Praise the Lord. So treat them the same way mean, treat them righteously and fairly act on the same principle towards them and the only principle of the lord is holiness is righteousness so that is this, the way in which we christian employers must treat the christian worker praise the lord you must treat them righteously you must treat them with a lot of fairness with a lot of justice apply justice in every uh, interaction with them and apply morality everything you do should be moral praise the lord so that is what the bible means when it say treat them the same way treat them with the same principle of holiness everything you do must be geared towards holiness you must make sure you are fair you are righteous in your dealing with the christian employee praise the lord when the Bible says, don't threaten them, it means do not use violent and abusive words with them or on them, praise the Lord. And if you have worked with other people who are not, uh, they are not Christian employers, you have experienced this. Some are even Christian employers, but people, you know, people fall. People go away from the presence of the Lord, from the ways of the Lord and they fall so we have seen people who use violent words abusive words with their employees the bible is against that the instruction that god is giving here in ephesians is that every christian employer must use kind words while dealing with a christian employee regardless of the circumstance whether you are at loggerheads with them you must make sure even at that point the ways of the Lord are in place. You treat them the way Christ would have treated, treated them. Praise the Lord. When the Bible says no favoritism, it means God is not a respecter of persons. Whether you are, you know, you are rich according to the standards of this world and you have employees who are very poor, you know, both of you have the same master who is God. And God is no respecter of persons. That is where you see, regardless of whether you are rich or poor, we both die and are buried in the same way. You know, we both decompose. There's nothing that is different. According to the standards of God, there's no difference between a Christian employer and a Christian employee. Or even an employee who is not a Christian. 
there is no difference between you and them in the presence of God. So in the presence of God, there is no favoritism. And you should, you should be aware of that in your dealings if you are a Christian employer. Praise the Lord. So what Ephesians 6 verse 9 is telling us is that a Christian employer must take care of the Christian employee. You must take care of your employees. Praise the Lord. So what we want to learn about in this Bible study is how to take care of your employees. And this is not a waste of time, by the way, because people go through a lot in the hands of uh, in their employers because there is no place where people are trained how to treat their employees, especially how to treat your maid, your shamba boy, Nobody treats you. You, 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 know, you, you just find a way on how to treat them. Nobody teaches you how to treat them. And so this Bible study is an eye opener to Christian employers on how to treat their employees. So the first way in which you can care for your employees is by paying them their wages. Praise the Lord. Luke chapter 10 verse 7 says, The worker deserves his pay. And these were the words of Jesus Christ, that a worker deserves their pay. So this is a warning to Christian employers who send away their employees without paying them, or you let your employees work for you and you don't pay them. That is not Christian. That is not the way of the Lord. That is not the instructions of God. If you don't have money to pay your workers, kindly work on your own, because every worker deserves their pay. Every time they spend working for you deserves payment. And that is the instructions of Christ, the exact words of Jesus, our Savior. So make sure you pay fairly your employees. Anybody who is working under you deserves their pay. Anytime you fail to pay those who are working under you, you go against the ways of the Lord as a Christian employee. Praise the Lord. Next time you are not going to church again, and pretend that you are born again and you are serving God, hallelujah, if you know that you have not paid your workers. Pay your workers fairly. And when you agree on a certain amount of money, do not pay them less than what you agreed. Make sure you follow the terms and conditions because that is Christian. That is how a Christian employee should do. Praise the Lord. The second way in, it, in which you need to a care for them is by encouraging and rewarding them for their labor. Praise the Lord. When you book when you read the book of Romans chapter 13 verse 3 to 4, you find that Paul is giving instruction to a Christian Christian employees that you should not fear your employer uh, any every time because an employer is commanded by God to reward you when you do something good and punish you when you d don't do something that is good. Praise the Lord. So as a Christian employer, learn to say thank you. Learn to congratulate your employees when they do right. Learn to, you know, reward them when they do something good. Reward them for integrity. Reward them for hard work. By doing this, you reflect God's character who rewards those who do good as written in the book of Hebrews 11 verse 6, you find that God rewards every good doing. That is how God works. Anytime you do good to someone, God rewards you. And even at the end of the age, when the, the earth, heaven and earth passes away, we will be rewarded for every good deed we did. You see? So that is, that is the nature of God. So that also should be the nature of a Christian employer. A Christian employer must reward, must congratulate, must encourage the Christian employee, must encourage his or her employees. Praise the Lord. Another way in which to care for them is by giving them fair discipline. Praise the Lord. People look at discipline as a very bad thing, but discipline is not a bad thing altogether. Disciplining people is Christian, and it, even God disciplines those he loves. Praise the Lord. 
discipline is actually part of reward because we reward you for something good we have to discipline you when you go against the instructions of God because if we don't discipline you then we are encouraging evil praise the Lord so a Christian employer should not fear punishing fairly the employee if an employee comes late to work you know you can tell them go home and you'll not be paid for today that is not wrong that is not sin that is right okay when a Christian employee you know does something against the rules and regulations of work they have to be disciplined fairly tell them go home or you can tell them you know do this or this just you know you know your punishments but make sure you discipline them when they go against the rule because that is the ways of the Lord that is the nature of God when we when we when we go against the ways of the Lord we have to be disciplined and that God has given you that the same power as a Christian employer you must be able to discipline your employees when they go against the rules and regulations of work because in that way you are you you are restraining them from sinning praise the Lord but when you encourage them to to do uh, you know to do evil to sin they come to work and uh, they're late you just welcome them they you know they become in discipline you just encourage them you know the next place of work they go they're going to suffer because you didn't take that opportunity to tell them or to point out what is wrong praise the Lord so don't fear to discipline your employees so long as you are teaching you are disciplining them fairly that is Christian that is God's instruction. An employee must be disciplined. Praise the Lord. Another way in which you care for your employees is by praying for them. Praise the Lord. God knows the employer. God also knows the heart of the employee. He knows both of us. He's our master, both of us. So, you know, you can tell your employee, do this, do this, do this. But you won't be there with them when the devil tries to oppose that. When the devil tempts them, when the devil put them under temptation, you'll not be there. So that is why you should lift them to prayer. You know, at times, there are employers or the houses where everybody sits down, including the workers. In, in, you, or you find that like uh, there are organizations where people arrive in the morning and they, they have to go for prayers in the morning. In the evening, they also pray before they go home. You know, when you involve your workers in the prayer, you know, so that, you know, you lift both of you to Christ because only God knows your character and the character of the employee. You can, you know, give every instruction, but you can't be there when your employees are tempted by the devil. So the best and the safest way is to lift them up in prayer. Pray for them and pray with them. Praise the Lord. Uh, the next way in which you can care for your employees is by modeling Christ. Praise the Lord. 2 Corinthians 2 verse 15 says this, For we are to God the aroma of Christ among those who are being saved and those who are perishing. Praise the Lord. We are the aroma of Christ. And if we are the aroma of Christ as employers, do you think your employees can smell that aroma of Christ in you? The Bible says you are the light of the world. Can your employees see that light in you? Praise the Lord. If the Bible says we are the salt of the world. When your employees are with you, do you add taste to their life? Do you add value to their life? Can they really say that, you know what, the time that I worked for Cynthia, this and this and this changed in my life. This and this and this grew in my life. I improved in one, two, three ways because of the time I was living and working for Cynthia. Praise the Lord. During the time I was working in this organization, I was able to change one, two, three. Can your employees say that? Make sure you model Christ in your life. Make sure that your employees can see Christ in your interaction with them and others so that they can emulate. People look at your actions. They learn from your actions. Not what you say, not the instructions you give. They want you to they want to see you follow the instructions you give. Praise the Lord. So make sure your employees can smell the aroma of Christ in your life. They can see that light. You know, they can feel that taste that you add to their life. Praise the Lord. And the last way in which you care for your employees is by knowing 
they are by knowing your heavenly father praise the lord you have to know your heavenly master you see the second part of ephesians chapter 6 verse 9 says that um, uh, um, that do not threaten them since you know that he who is both their master and yours is in heaven there is no favoritism with them so you know you can't be a christ follower if you know you you don't know christ you can't walk away that you don't know you have to know the person you're following praise the lord so that is why you can't be a master that is um a master that is following the ways of god if you don't know god so the life of a christian employer must be that of continually seeking god always doing bible study always doing research on how to be a good employer always praying you must be constantly seeking to know the god you serve you must be constantly seeking to know your master who is in heaven more because you can't follow your master unless you know him praise the lord colossians 4 verse 1 says masters provide your slaves with what is right and fair because you know that you also have a master in heaven praise the lord you know that you have a master in heaven you have to seek you have to know more once you know your master then it will be possible to follow the ways of your master praise the lord you have uh, i i'm coming to the end of this bible study okay and i want to give you three points that i want to use for conclusion the first point is in order to be a good leader you must be a good follower praise the lord you have to follow christ so that people can lead you as can people can follow you as you follow christ praise the lord uh, another thing is a relationship with christ should drastically affect every relationship in the believer's life including those in the workplace praise the lord you know the workplace is where you spend most of your time meaning the workplace is the biggest mission field for a christian praise the lord the workplace is where you spend 90 percent of your time of the day like eight hours is a long time working there are people who work eight hours and still carry job home so you see that is the biggest mission field for a christian that is where you have to carry out the the instructions of god that is where you preach with your actions that is where you preach with your life that is where you you carry the light of christ and let people see it so make sure you as an employer in the workplace you make sure that any time you get into that office or you get into that house wherever you are as an employer anytime you get in there just know that now you are a christian soldier getting into a mission field and it is your time to shine the light of christ praise the lord i hope you have been blessed with this bible study make sure you leave me comments and feedback on the comment section below and uh, see you next time okay god bless you Faith comes by, hearing the word of God, hearing comes by, listening to the word of God, I pray you get faith the size of a mustard seed and grow, we know it so you know just what to do with it. Faith comes by, hearing the word of God, and if you heard it, please pick up the word of God, I pray you get faith the size of a mustard seed and grow, we know it so you know just what to do with it. This world it ain't home, we just live in it as pilgrims, convince yourself, read the world and see that's what the real is. Santa to my king, my Jesus, the God of Eve.